Hey friends, welcome to Power Coat Music. In this presentation, we're going to analyze the technical specifications for the Tascam DP24SD 24-track Digital Portage Studio. Please keep in mind that the audio technical specifications for the DP24SD unit are the same as the DP32SD units. But before we go any further, I want to quickly ask you to please check out my YouTube homepage to view all of my videos carefully organized by subject. Also, if you find you like this video, please like and subscribe. You see, it really helps out the channel a great deal. And it also helps us to keep doing what we're doing. And now, back to the presentation. You'd be surprised by the number of people who have asked me over the years if you can make professional quality recordings with the Tascam DP24SD. My answer was usually, that depends on the user and their skill level with recording music. <laughs> However, my answer really didn't get to the point of the matter because you could say that about a lot of hardware recorders on the market today. You see, I made this presentation to analyze the technical facts and their definitions for anyone who has a DP24SD or anyone who is interested in purchasing one. And also, if they have any doubts, anyone who may have any doubts to the professional level quality of this unit. This is because I've never done this type of presentation uh, for the DP24SD in any of my previous videos. When I present the technical specifications for the DP24SD, I will also give definitions as to what some of those tech specs mean so that you can use this information to more intelligently compare the DP24SD to other units in its price range and also to more expensive units. In this way, you can get a much better understanding of exactly how good the DP24 really is from a more professional, and informed perspective. Now with this, grab your coffee and your tea and stay with me until the end. If you like the geeky tech stuff or if you're just interested, you won't want to miss this presentation. Let's dive right in and check out the technical specifications in detail for the Tascam DP24 SD. On your screen now, we have a chart and in that chart, we have two columns. The first column is the title of the technical specification and to the right, or should I say the second uh, column is gonna be the technical specification description. So we'll start with the first column and the first row, which is the recording media. The DP24SD takes two types of recording media. One is an SD card, the other is a SDHC card. And you'll see the sizes for both respectively listed. The next row is the file system. The SD card is able to function with a FAT16 uh, file uh, system, and the SDH card, SDHC card, I should say, can function with a FAT32 file system. The next row are your inputs on the back of the device, which there are eight, which is A through H. Now these A through H inputs are combo jacks, and what that means is that with a combo jack, you can input two different types of cables uh, to the same jack. The first type of cable is an XLR cable and the second is a TRS cable. So let's start with the XLR cable and the specifications for that. For this connector, XLR cables have one ground, two hot and three cold and they are balanced cables. The next row is the input impedance, which is 2.4K. Now what input imped impedance means is that this is the electrical resistance presented by an audio device to the signal source connected to it. Audio devices with high input impedances require less power from the signal source to drive the circuit. High input impedance devices exert a lighter load on the signal source. Next, we have the nominal input level, which is minus 
14 dBU. The nominal input level is the typical operating level that a piece of equipment is designed to handle. It's a reference point with the dynamic range of the device chosen to provide a good signal to noise ratio and sufficient headroom to accommodate audio peaks without distortion. Last but not least in this section is the maximum input level, which is plus 2 dBU. The maximum input level is the highest signal level, that is voltage or power, that an audio device like a microphone or audio interface can handle without distortion or clipping. It's a crucial specification for ensuring clean, high quality recordings and preventing damage to the equipment. Now, if you'll notice for the XLR and for the TRS, the nominal and maximum input levels listed here are, are listed as DBUs. Now, a DBU in audio is pronounced actually as DU. <laughs> so it is a unit of measurement for voltage, specifically referencing 0.775 volts. It's commonly used in professional audio equipment to indicate signal levels. A zero DU represents 0.775 volts and a higher, po and higher positive numbers like plus four DU indicates higher voltage levels. So keep that in mind. Next, we'll move on to the TRS part of the combo jack of the input A through H and its connector. And its connector is a quarter inch uh, TRS phone jack and it's balanced. And then you will have its input impedance, which is 22K or more. Now on the input H uh, on the back of the DB24, when you select the TAR, that then changes the specification to a 1M, okay? Next, we have the nominal input level, which is plus 4BU, and the maximum input level, which is plus 20BU for the TRS. After that, we have the stereo out and its connector. This is an RCA pin jack and unbalanced, and we have our output, imped our output impedance, our nominal output level, and our maximum output level. Next, we have our effects sends section. And the connector here is a quarter inch TS phone jack, which is unbalanced. Then we have our output impedance, our nominal output level, and our maximum output level. And you'll notice our nominal output level and our maximum output level in the effects send section is measured differently. This is measured using a DBV measurement. Now, what is DBV, you might ask? Now, a D in DBV, the reference value is one volt. So if an audio device has an output level of zero DBV, it means that the voltage is one volt. If it's minus 10 DBV, it means that the voltage is lower than one volt. So keep that in mind. Next, we have our monitor out and we'll start with the connector. That's a quarter inch TRS phone jack unbalanced. And what follows below is your output impedance, your nominal output level, and your maximum output level. Let's move on to the phone section. Now with the phone section, we have the connector, which is going to be a quarter inch stereo phone jack. And we have the maximum output level. And the maximum output level here is 70 MW plus 70 MW. And we also have the total harmonic THD, which is the total harmonic distortion um, specifications for that. Now you might ask yourself, what is 70 MW? Well, an MW in audio stands for milliwatt. This is a unit of power equal to one thousandth of a watt. It's commonly used to express the power output of audio amplifiers or the sensitivity of headphones and speakers. Okay, that's why it's measured that way. Next, we have the USB section. The connector is a USB mini B type. The format is uh, USB, 2.0 high speed mass storage class. After that, we have the remote section and the connector is a 2.5 TRS jack. What follows then is your power, it's a dedicated AC power adapter, your power consumption, the dimensions of the unit, the weight of the unit, and accessories uh, for the unit. That is, of course, if you buy it new, if you might buy it used, you might also get those. Last but not least is the audio performance. So let's take a look at the frequency response. The frequency response is just what you would want it to be in a professional audio device, which is 
20HZ to 20KHZ. You might ask yourself, well, why is this important? Well, the typical human hearing range is between 20HZ and 20HZ, uh, or should I say 20KHZ. Now, this range represents the frequencies of sound waves that a healthy young person can perceive as sound recordings, or, you know, as sound according to acoustical surfaces. So, you got to keep in mind that hearing sensitivity decreases with age, particularly at higher frequencies. But it's right in the range of human hearing. We can't hear outside of that. So this is a, what we call a flat frequency response, which is great. Under that, we have the signal to noise ratio, which is 90 decibels or greater. And then last but not least is your THD, which stands for total harmonic distortion, which is 0.01% or less. Well, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and leave a comment in the comment section about this content. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and TikTok. Now, while you're here, check out some of the music, videos, and playlists because they're designed just for you. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.